War. War never changes. Hello and welcome, one and all, to War Never Changes, episode number 27. Phil has been a gracious, gracious person. He's sitting over that way. I got it right this time. Phil, how are you doing today, sir? Good. How about you, buddy? I'm doing great. And the reason I say you're a gracious person is because you put together for a second time, you've put together the show notes. And you have entitled this episode, The Farce Awakens. And I love it. And that is going to be the episode title for sure. And you put together some really cool notes. And it wouldn't be a show if I didn't take them and say, cool, but, and instead talk about something entirely different. <laughs> <laughs> in my defense, yes, sir. back in the early days, I used to get super excited and send you stuff to talk about on the show yes. all the time. Then I got lazy and complacent because I figured, meh, Jim will do it. Yeah, I was going to say, when we first started, you were, like, texting me constantly of ideas and topics and all these awesome things. And then I guess we hit the 20 viewer per video, you know, 20 views per video. And you're like, well, I'm high I'm on out. the hog. <laughs> <laughs> my, my work here is done. <laughs> and you, It starts with one, buddy. Hey, listen, it happens. Um and then you just retired. But I'm glad to see you're back in form. You have returned. And we have some great notes. And I want to go through each and every one of them. But first, I want to talk about, to me, the most groundbreaking news of my little day. Because it's been a pretty quiet day, honestly. It's that Chris Lee is now no longer associated with Halo Infinite. He was the guy running it. There was a litany of problems leading up to where we currently are in Halo Infinite with people leaving. And Microsoft has said so many times, fear not, Chris Lee is still at the helm. It's under his creative direction. It's under his creative guidance. We then saw the Halo Infinite trailer. It didn't look so great. It was announced that Joseph Staten, a former Halo designer, was coming back. And Chris Lee may be replaced or be a co-designer. And today he has formally announced he is out of there. Phil, what does this mean for Halo Infinite? And if we weren't concerned, should we be concerned now? Well, we were already concerned. But I want I, what I want to do is, instead of me babbling about something that I'm not all that intricately familiar with, is I want you to tell us why this is a big deal. Because I know you know why it's a big deal. Sure. So... The reason why this is a big deal is because we saw what Halo Infinite was up to a certain point. And graphics aside, which obviously is a big part of the story, but graphics aside, Halo, when it started, was under one person's creative vision. I'm talking about Halo Infinite. I'm not talking about Global Hell. I'm talking about Halo Infinite. And that was Chris Lee. So he was the final say on everything with this game. Multiplayer, single player, leveling, whatever. He had a vision. Whether or not the vision is good or not, it's one vision. And what happens is you start introducing more people, whether it's at the 90% mark, whether it's at the 99% mark. And ultimately what ends up happening is somebody goes, you know, that's cool, but, and they start introducing different ideas. We've seen it happen on Destiny. We've seen it happen on um, Anthem. There's been a lot of games that have had multiple creative shifts. And you can almost tell exactly where things went off the rails. And this spells a big problem because that means you're going to get most likely a very less cohesive experience. And it doesn't even really, honestly, it doesn't even matter so much about games. This has happened in movies too. Um, that... Uh, I know Justice League is a really good example of that, where one person filmed a bunch of stuff and then another director came in and the movie just didn't work right. Um, it's happened before in other movies. There's a Steven Spielberg movie um, with that little kid who gets frozen underwater, Haley Joel Osment. Did you see that movie? And he left. No idea what you're talking about. He left and then another director came in and you can almost tell the exact point in the movie 
where the new guy came in because the movie comes to a very natural end. And then, like, suddenly there's, like, another 30 minutes after it. You don't remember that? I'm not a good movie person. I, I was hoping you would bail me out, Mr. Movie Buff. I think it was a Disney movie, too, which shame on you for not knowing that. It's kind of funny, though, that uh, <laughs> that Spielberg dipped and they thought they were going to replace Spielberg with anyone. <laughs> if anybody knows what the hell I'm talking about, that's your homework in the comments. Is just name that. Um, but sticking to games, which I do understand, I will say that um, when you have a... You know, sometimes. You... You the mid the vision is one person's vision or one team's vision. When things change, the vision changes. Look at the tonal shift. But well, you you can even speak to this. Look at the tonal shift between Halo Three and Halo Four. Yeah, radically different. Whether you liked it or not, it was radically different. Um, you see what happens when new people come in and inject ideas, and they've already done voiceover lines, and they've already named themes and progression and everything you, you can't just shift midstream this is a big problem this really spells a big problem and even if the next guy who comes in even if joseph statton is better technically better than chris lee or technically smarter or whatever i still think you're going to have a very jumbled mess of a game and that really scares me because we saw how bad halo 5 was at least single player experience how confusing and nonsensical and broken that story was. Fighting the Warden Eternal, like, what, 19 times? It was just a mess at the end. So everybody who came on threw their name in that and, you know, tried to help out and change it. And that's the, that's the game we got. And that game is not good, at least from yeah. a story perspective. Yeah. Halo needs you know, a win here. Interesting. Yeah, it'd be interesting because now, you know, 343 Studios has, you know, their sister studio, Bethesda Softworks, where maybe they could help, you know, right? maybe Todd Howard could lend a lend a whisper in an ear and, and help with some lore stuff or some, oh, that'd be so you know, cool. something creative and magnificent as opposed to whatever the fuck Halo 5 was supposed to be. So if the Master Chief gets sh- shouts, he lifts his helmet up so he can boost so, and he puts his helmet back there. <laughs> no, he takes he takes the helmet off and da 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 da. da. <laughs> I'm pretty sure my balls would explode from jizzing. Oh my so. god, that would be insane. <laughs> I mean, you know, there could be those synergies in the future. Obviously, it'll be curious to see. I think Bethesda tells an incredibly compelling story as compared to what we've seen in some of the other Microsoft franchises. But yeah, this was. Um, I think a lot of people look at this and roll their eyes and go, oh, great, here we go again. But taking it the next step further and thinking about just holistically where this where this game has gone and how it's kind of progressed through the last few years of development, um, to leave this late in the in the thing, either he got really mad or, you know, he was totally replaced and he just didn't want to deal with it anymore. But would indicate to me he was really mad because... Either he wasn't in control or something came on and he's like, that's stupid. I think this is a bad idea. I don't want to do this anymore. Anything, regardless of any of those situations, it isn't good for us. <laughs> when the game comes out, when we're playing it and there's going to be a moment or a, a voiceover line or something that comes out that just sucks, we're going to be like, yep, here we go. This is what we were talking Like, this might have been the exact moment when Chris Lee said, I'm done. <laughs> you just yeah. don't know. So I wanted to bring that up first because I just, as a Halo super fan, which I am a Halo super fan, I, I need a good game in my life and I need a win from 343 and they just can't get it together. And it doesn't seem like it's going to happen anytime soon. Yeah, I I know that Bungie did their thing or whatever and, and that, that was probably less than a peaceful transfer of power or whatever you want to call it, but... Right. Um, you know, I don't know that three four three was the was the hands was the safe pair of hands to entrust this franchise to. Um, the last two games, you know, four and five, prove that and everything everything that they've put out so far has been kind of a piece of shit. If you really, I mean, fun games or whatever, but nothing compared to the first three, in my opinion. Um, I did have a lot of fun with four, but five was just forgettable at best. And I don't know, man, <laughs> this thing, 
it was going to be a launch title and now it's like not going to come out until two years into this generation or whatever it's going to be. I mean, who knows how actually big of a setback this is going to be. I wonder how much of the shit that they're doing they're going to have to scrap because some new guy is going to come in with a new vision. Right. That's what I worry about. You start to get these assets that don't make sense. The code isn't as streamlined as it was. The plan shifts halfway through. It's not going to run as well, whatever. Um, games are not designed for this kind of radical overhaul at the 11th hour, unless it's horribly wrong. But, you know, if it's horribly wrong, then shame on everybody. Not just, maybe, maybe Chris Lee is the, the, the only sane one. He's like, what are we doing here, guys? You know, Microsoft does not make good games. And honestly, their, their first-party studios have not produced exceptionally like mind-blowing experiences in the last 10 years. Um, Crackdown 3 is a perfect example of what happens when you give Microsoft developers time and money to make something. They don't make anything very good. So we'll see. I don't know. I, I just wanted to bring that up because I it, I read that and I just like I audibly yelled out loud. I just I, I remember yelling and I, I told Rachel, I was like, holy shit. <laughs> She's like, what? And I'm like, Chris Lee quit. And she's like, who's Chris Lee? And I'm like, who's Chris Lee? <laughs> I'm yelling at her. It's like, it's a disaster. But I want to give, <laughs> you can imagine that. It's a typical day in our house. Um, I want to give a quick little story here. And then we'll move on to your incredible show notes. But I'm pulling up, you can't see it. You'll see it later. A photo of lean, mean Jim E years ago. And I say years, like two years ago standing next to chris lee and i was at this was at halo um this was at microsoft's fan fest halo had a little thing they you can meet and greet some of the designers and i spent a long time talking to chris lee because i knew who he was and i looked him in his eye i looked him right in the eye and i was like hey man listen i am a halo super fan clearly i'm wearing a halo shirt i, I marked out to get a photo with the master chief waiting in line i'm like listen bro you got to promise me this game isn't going to suck ass. <laughs> you have to look me in the eye and promise. And he's like, I promise. And I'm like, do you mean it? <laughs> he said, yes, we're going to actually, we're going to get this done. And here we are <laughs> two years later and the dream is broken. And that is, it's really unfortunate. Phil cared so much he fell asleep. Sorry. Very important came through i was making sure i didn't lose my job so don't lose your job that's, bro. An, that's an interesting story um what that's a really interesting story <laughs> oh yeah 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 sorry sorry i'm sorry phil is our weekly show bother <laughs> just kidding um yeah so I, I i guess my point is like i maybe i have a more personal connection to this than a lot of people but i spent a long time talking with this guy about things i liked on halo 5 and things i didn't like and things I thought about Halo 4. He's been around a long time. He's been there since 2008. So he's he's a veteran to their development cycle. But What was his out. response to the negative feedback that you gave him? He legitimately was very understanding. And he was like, I agree. I know. I agree. I wasn't a fan of this part either. And But he would always... He wasn't a politician. It wasn't like, hey, but what about this? Or can I interest you in this? He's like, yeah. I'm like, dude, we fight the Warden of Eternal like... 14 times in your game like what the hell like who wanted to do that everybody hated that you know uh, and he's like yeah it was kind of excessive but you know we needed we felt like we wanted to do more of an emphasis on boss fights because everybody really liked the boss fights from halo 2 we wanted to recapture some of that magic and i'm like well so he had an answer but um he seemed like he genuine i mean i remember writing him on twitter afterwards and i posted that picture and he's like yeah i remember you and not that we talk every day he's probably doesn't know the hell i am anymore but I was like, I, I talked to him for a good 15 minutes, like legit, just one on one. And Rachel just stood there like, <laughs> yeah, but how many times are you going to get that opportunity? Never. That's what Fan Fest is about. And that's why I love Fan Fest. We're gonna actually talk about Fan Fest later on in the show. Um, but yeah, that's what Fan Fest is about. It's about bringing fans together. So I was brought together. All right, moving on to Phil's amazing show notes. Topic number one, what probably should have been the real topic of the show until I decided elsewhere. elsewhere. <laughs> what is the role of social media in video games? And this does tie in directly to Cyberpunk 2077's 
crunchy golden delay <laughs> where <laughs> Phil writes, I want to read this because this is a phenomenal, like you, my friend, are, are a true poet of our time. Quote, the shittiest cereal ever released or a recipe for a game that will one day be beloved as a, a similar storyline. And then you go on. Be brutally honest. Now, I'm going to tell you this. Why are these two topics related? Because media has been riding and doing a social jerk off of Cyberpunk 2077 since day one. I don't think we can take media seriously. We've talked about this on the show before. There are way too many people have too many personal investments in getting review copies of PlayStation early or getting an Xbox early or getting the little figurines at E3 or getting VIP access, early launch games, whatever. Um, and the reality is we have far too many personalities and we've gotten away from the news. News is not um, a gen like a generic, not a generic. News is not a general universal truth anymore. Everybody's putting their spin on it. And it's right. getting a lot worse. I agree. I agree. There's far too many biases in the information that is relayed to us and not just in like the opinion, but when can it be released? When can we hear about it? What are the relevant topics? What are we going to brush under the rug and what are we going to focus on? And I just, uh, yes, you know, I'm just not into it anymore, man. You know, it used to be like there would be an announcement. It would be somewhere where you could read it or research it online. But now like any idiot with a video camera that can scrounge together a couple of viewers, which we're not able to oh, do. Sorry. Well, you have done privately, but since I started <laughs> Hey, along, hey we're, you and me to the top. Listen, down, we're going to be the greatest War Never Changes podcast ever. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, you know, it's like, and I hope that if we ever do come to any prominence and more than like six people watch our show, I hope that everyone remembers how universally I shit on everyone. <laughs> Because, you know, eventually if we are, if we do make it, like people are going to look back at the stuff we made and Phil Spencer's going to be watching like, wow, eight episodes straight. You took a shit on me, dude. I'm not giving you anything. That's fine. That's fine. I don't want don't anything want you have to say. I got my own money. I just want right. to express a fucking opinion. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I, I agree with, you know, I agree that if we ever do make it, we're going to have a lot of enemies. <laughs> <laughs> I totally agree. We're going to be on an island, and I'm okay with that. But I'll say that, um, you know, the amount of tweets that I have seen this video, uh, this news of Cyberpunk being delayed again. Remember, it was delayed from April to September, then from September to November, and now November to December. Um, yeah. This, this, the way that the news talks about this studio, it's like they urinate gold bouillon. It's like CD Projekt Red is the greatest studio ever. I guess this means they won't be contenders for game of the year this year. We're going to have to wait until next year. CD Projekt Red delivered Witcher. And I still play Witcher to this day. I have a Witcher tramp stamp. It's my favorite game. I love Geralt. Uh, I, you know, the Netflix series is like Shakespeare. <laughs> like th there's people love it. And then you got the exact opposite of people who are like, and I'm more in this camp. Like, I think Witcher 3 sucked. Sorry, come at me. Um, I don't think it was a fun game. Technically, it was shit, honestly. I mean, the story, maybe it was good. I couldn't get past how bad technically it was. Um, yeah, okay. This The Netflix series was very convoluted. It didn't make a whole lot of sense. I don't know how many people really watched it. You worked your employees to death. They got pissed off. <laughs> now, here you are. <laughs> like, so... You, you reap what you sow? I don't know. I mean, the truth is, it's delayed. I'm more frustrated that they can't get their prediction right. Like, it's ready when it's ready. That's the philosophy it should be. But I guess because of marketing and logistics and all this kind of stuff, they're, I feel like they're going to rush. And if this game now... Re reality, Phil, all kidding aside, what the hell is 21 Days going to do for anybody? If this, game, if this game is 21 days away from perfection then either it's pretty damn close or it's so bad we're going to salvage whatever we can to make it so-so. 
Yeah, I don't know. I really hope that it's not the latter of those because they've literally been working on it for like 15 years or something stupid like that. And boy, are they going to pull the wool over everyone's eyes. Think about your console. Think about all the merchandise they've sold for this game. I mean, it's become its own like island of, you know, the the meat, the... The amount of press, the amount of merchandise they've been able to funnel into this game, if it's not perfect, you're gonna piss a lot of people off. Yeah, man. I'm gonna be I'm gonna to be totally honest with you. The way I feel about it right now is I understand they want to put a quality product out, but I'm 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 done with it. If it weren't for the fact that I bought the <laughs> Cyberpunk Xbox, or you know, I didn't buy it, I received it as a gift. Right. If it weren't for the fact that I had a console that's gonna automatically download that game when it eventually fucking comes out whenever that is <laughs> um i wouldn't buy it i'm just uh i'm 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 personally i'm all set on it i'm gonna play it because i'm gonna there's gonna be like a little bit of uh like a resentment on my shoulder i feel like like the first time something stupid happens that i don't like i'm gonna rage quit and never touch it again <laughs> and i'm gonna give horrible reviews on the internet I'll be curious what the hype is on it in terms of like, are people going to honestly give this game a fair shake either way? I mean, right now you have a very enraged fan base and a lot of, you know, Rees memeing online, you know, Rees, anybody, you know, the Tendi subreddit is exploding as people are raging that their game is going to be late. Fine. Okay. You know, welcome to reality. Things are late. But I think a vast majority of people think this game is like the second coming. And I want it to be, trust me. I want a good game. I just, I have seen in the past hype build up for things and it's never, ever what people expect, ever. It never will be. And we've put it on such a pedestal now in media, really. That's, I mean, circling back to the original point of, you know, the role of social media in these influencers and the way that, you know, like Jeff Keighley and all these other famous, prominent, you know, YouTubers are like, worshiping this game it's like guys you are really setting everybody up for major disappointment and i just don't think they see i don't i think they're so far removed from like you know their hype is so far out in the stratosphere that they're just not able to like think rationally anymore i don't know what the fuck do they care as long as the hype's up in the air and a million people buy it it doesn't matter they're right. coming out at 60 dollars a pop across all available platforms People are going to buy a fucking ton of these things, probably. Yeah. And any any bitching that they hear, they'll probably either give us some sort of stupid, like, Nordic, oh, we're sorry, or whatever, and they'll fix <laughs> it with a patch. Who cares? They don't I, care. So, my perspective, being at E3 a couple times now, um, I remember there was a cyberpunk booth in the center of the South Concourse. Um, and people, the line was wrapped around twice. It was like a four hour wait to get in. There was no gameplay. I'm sorry. There's no, like you can actually play. It was a movie. It was a behind closed doors, as they call it, a behind closed doors movie of a snippet of gameplay that had not yet been released. And people, fans were waiting for hours. And I mean, F O U R hours to get in, to see this gameplay. And media was coming out with their little goodie bag because they get to walk right in. They don't have to go through the line. They were coming out with a little figurine of Keanu Reeves. They were coming out with a white shirt. And then there was a um, like a baseball hat that was like a white. I'm sorry, not white, yellow, like a yellow baseball hat. And they were walking around as if like they were like kings of the earth. And like, I got to see the behind closed door experience. Have you? People were like, oh, I'm still waiting in line. Oh, it's totally worth it. <laughs> And they're like walking around with their like loot bag gallivanting. And I'm like, I have never seen the amount of just so much fanboyism dripping ever for one product. And it won game of the show and people went on to talk about like it, it changed their life forever. And then we finally got to see the gameplay and we're like, it looks okay, but it's not like, I don't know. No, I don't want to hate on it. It's easy to be negative in things like this. But my point no, no, is, no, no. when you let's, make it this exciting, it, you have to be realistic. The reality is going to come back at some point. Let's let's hate on it. Jim, this is a game that's been in development for, I don't know, it got announced in what, 2008? Oh, God, really? I'm going to look it up. Let's I say that I'm right. Let's say that I'm right. It either it's got been announced. a while. I do agree with you. It was announced a long, long time ago. Yeah, it was either like 2004 or 2008 or somewhere in there, I believe. 
I'm looking while you're talking. Go ahead. And let's just say that let's just say it got announced in 2010. Okay, it's been in development for at least 10 years at that point. Mm-hmm. You can't even fucking customize cars in this game, Jim. You can't pick your color. You find a car, that's how you get it. Like, even the shitheads over at Rockstar that can't do anything but make um, in-game purchases work, they can fucking figure out a car a car configurator. So, I don't know. I just feel like, you know, they felt... they You can customize your genitals, but you can't customize your car. That seems like... It seems... <laughs> It seems like their priorities are in the wrong places. So it says, according to Wikipedia, that it entered pre-development in 2016, which means they actually began to develop it then. But it says that it was being developed simultaneously with Witcher 3's engine. So you're you're right. It's probably around 2011, 2012, conceptually, is when the game started to be formed, at least in the idea process. It's very easy to dream. It's very easy to feature creep. And um, there's probably, you know... There's probably going to be a lot of stuff in this game that doesn't work well. As we know in a lot of things, not just video games, but we'll focus on video games. You know as the scope increases, the individual excitement or uh, gameplay moments do decrease. You know, Grand Theft Auto, wildly massive game, driving, flying, shooting, running, all these great things, right? But like the golf in Grand Theft Auto sucks. If you want a golf experience, you go buy a golf game. So just the fact that these open world games have these events to do, they're definitely not on caliber with things that are more focused experiences. So my fear has always been with Cyberpunk that it's just too big of an idea. It's just too massive. You To do anything, to go anywhere, to talk anywhere, any building you see, drive any car, do any of these things, it's, it's unrealistic. And I think now that we're getting close to the end, and the fact that CD Projekt Red has not been, not that I would expect them to, to be specific on what is going on, it's probably that as it's all coming together, they're probably playing it going, this isn't as fun as we thought it was, or this mechanic really sucks, or who's going to want to spend time playing a you know, half-baked driving sim, if, or there, you know, whatever it happens to be. I don't know the specifics, but this pre-patch is going to be like 700 terabytes at this point because... The game's already done. They've already pressed it. It's being, right now, it's being produced at factories, and yet they're still developing on it. Like, this day one patch is going to be insane. Yeah, I don't know. I just, it, it no matter what it is, it's not going to live up to the level of hype. It can't. That, that it, it, you know, I don't even understand why people are hyping it so hard. Nobody's fucking played the whole thing. Nobody yeah. that I fucking know of. If Jeff Keighley hasn't gotten his hands on a, on a pre-production like and played through the whole fucking thing, I don't know, and I don't trust him to be impartial anyway. I have like I have nothing against Jeff Keighley as a person. I just don't trust him to be impartial. He's too prominent. He's too prominent within that realm. You know who yeah. I would trust to be independent is is our guy on Twitter that we follow that gives us all our news that I don't want to tell anyone about because then everyone else will have the same access to him. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> he who shall remain nameless. Yeah, yeah. Somebody who right so. When they get in, so the, there's a really good chance that if this game's coming out in December, in the next two or three weeks, CD Projekt Red will, in fact, release copies to the media to begin to play. This is a very standard practice. The problem is these patches that are these day one patches coming out, they're just going to be promises. So it might not work for them. This is common. This happens in game reviews all the time. But the fact that they're still trying to pack com- content in so late to the game, the reviews you read are going to be impartial at best. They're not going to know the reality of it until everybody's playing it alongside. And yet, people have already built up this vision of what they think the game will be. And I suspect the reviews are going to be focused on what they think it's going to be rather than what it is. And I think you're going to have to take those review scores and those review videos and you're going to have to bring your expectations down a couple notches because we're just not there yet. Yeah, no. Uh, CD Project Red, Project Red is full of shit. We're not going to get this game in December, Jim. There's a psychology behind flying a commercial airliner, and it's part of the psychology of flying a commercial airliner is knowing how to herd cats and keep people calm when they're flying around in a tin can a mile above the earth. Um, and part of that is speaking in a calm voice and dealing in increments of time, which, while inconvenient, 
aren't outside the level of comfortability. That's why when you're in the air and there's a delay, it's going to be um it's going to be about 15 to 30 minutes. So just get comfortable and the stewardesses, you know what I mean? It's just like yeah, right. they're delaying they they it's like another month is not enough time to get anything of any significance done. We know. Agreed. But another month to us people, to the people who don't understand the cycles of game development as much as you have and me through learning what you know about it, right. I understand that now as well. The average person's going to buy that doesn't. So they hear another month, oh, that sucks. But, you know, and then it's like, it's like clockwork. Overnight, supposedly all these death threats came into the developers. Like, so re- yeah. release the shitty news in an increment of time that's palatable and then release distractions and by the way if you're out there and you're so upset about a month delay in a video game that you're threatening to kill developers <laughs> seriously go check yourself into a mental hospital get a life you're a piece of shit looking get... right at you whoever you are that's listening to this that felt that way but i don't actually believe that that happened um so i just think it's a distraction to get people talking about that Maybe. instead of how stupid this situation is and i actually got so mad i was scrolling through my twitter feed which you're the only person i'm follow you're the only person i follow except the other guy that i talk about and like i think todd howard i follow like six or seven people but my whole feed is you and someone who you follow and comment on some female content creator that has to do with video games i forget her name she just said something that was just such an outright shill thing to say about this game i literally told her to shut the fuck up and stop being a shill and i added her and and I, I I don't fucking care at this point. It's such an obvious, obvious Man. stream of bullshit. I can't deal with it anymore. Damn. We won't get that game in December. We may not even get it in January. I wouldn't be surprised for mid-Q1 for that game to release. I knew exactly who you were talking about, and I have the tweet right here. And it's from <laughs> Alana Pierce. I knew as soon as you said it. Quote, the Cyberpunk 2077 delay sucks for everyone who is excited to play it in November, but a majority of my thoughts are with the dev team. Everyone I've spoken to at CD Projekt Red is so passionate about the game. I just hope they're all in good health and good spirits. We can wait. 20 hours ago, Phil writes, quote, shut the fuck up. Stop making excuses for shitty customer facing policy. Well... I suspect you're going to be blocked from her very soon. But you're not missing much. I'm not a big fan of Alana either. Whatever. Wow. Phil throwing down shade. All right. Moving on. <laughs> um, PlayStation 5. This is this will get you in a good spirit, maybe. Although, hopefully, now that we have this idea that media is evil floating in the back of our mind, who knows? But, once again, we trust our, our reliable friends over in the media world, the haves. We are the have-nots who uh, have received PlayStation 5 units. Um, we are starting to see some of the unboxing videos. My understanding is gameplays embargo releases next Wednesday or Thursday. So we'll start to get more re- reviews of like games running, how fast they load, what the quality is. You'll start to see a lot of analysis there. But right now they're focused primarily on um, all the pieces of hardware. Uh, the question is, one, are you excited? Does it, do you care about this? And then two, what software are you specifically excited to see? Or is there, you know, like, what do do we need to see to convince you that you made the right choice? Or do you care? What are your your thoughts on that? So we'll start with the hardware first. What do you think about the unboxing stuff? I I think it's a beautiful console. I do too. I I think it's a really attractive console. Yeah. I think the texturing that they did with the button layout you know the x's and o's and triangles and stuff inside the panels i felt like that was a really nifty um thing that they did i like the contrast in the matte white and then gloss black i like kind of the backlit portion in between the fins i think it's a very pretty console i think it's I think it's kind of like they showed it laying on its side without the stand, and it looks so sad and <laughs> floppy and lopsided. It actually, I was like, aw. I saw it. I was like, aw, little guy. So for me, it's going to actually fit my space better to be horizontal, but I feel like I'm going to put it vertically just because I feel like that's the way it's meant to be displayed. You know what I mean? Oh, mine's going vertical, buddy. I'm moving like I'm looking over at my like little entertainment center underneath my TV. You know the the wall of horrible wiring. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm going to slide I'm going to slide my Xboxes over to the right Push and the PlayStations are going to take the left so that it's t- it's it can stand up straight because nice. it won't fit, it literally won't fit underneath my TV if I were to put it on the right side. It's a so. big boy, man. It's a big box. Um yeah. you know, they really emphasize the air cooling on this thing and um I'll be curious to see if it's quiet. I mean, that's a that's a pretty big air dam that's blowing through that thing. That's a, that Bro, case fan is one like, of the biggest case fans I've ever seen. The actual CPU is like this big, and then the rest of it's just a big fan. Like, <laughs> yeah, they're like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm gonna shut the door and play, and I'm gonna come out six hours later all sweaty. Oh man. Um, <laughs> So they've announced a couple interesting things. Um, we saw today that, well, it was a couple days ago, that Destruction All-Stars would be joining the PlayStation Plus lineup. And they recently, as in a couple hours ago, announced that Bug Snacks was going to be making a triumphant appearance on the PlayStation Plus lineup. So they're definitely stacking this console with a lot of software. Good or bad remains to be seen. I think I'm definitely not so yeah. convinced on Bug Snacks. Bugsnacks is coming pre-installed on the console? No, it's not, but it's going to be free with PlayStation Plus this month. Oh, oh I was going to say, cancel cancel my pre-orders. <laughs> I'm canceling my other pre-orders. Um, I will not be party to making that game popular. Fuck as far game. as I know, the only game that's on there is that Astrobot experience. Like, more Astro like the tech demo. or whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I... The, the Destruction All-Stars being kind of delayed and coming later, I think is a good idea. And I think Bug Snacks coming to PlayStation Plus is a good idea because I don't think those games would do well on their own. I just don't. I mean, I think everyone can say, oh, the Bug Snacks theme song is cute. Or, oh, it's funny. I'm going to eat an, a banana and I'm going to turn into a banana. Look how funny. Like... I don't think people would go out and invest money on that. I think what they would do is they would play it Maybe, you know, they play a demo and go, oh, that was fun. But I don't see people sitting down and jamming out on bug snacks for like a binge weekend the way people do with like Spider-Man or God of War or anything. So the fact that they're giving it away maybe tells you a little of the quality of the game. But I think it's probably the best way they're going to be able to get this product in front of people. Yeah. Yeah. And that uh, other one, Fast Times, that dinosaur ridgemont high oh, what the hell is the name of that game yeah the dinosaur uh, game I gotta look bye bye up. volcano high or something like that i really 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 hope that not a single person purchases that game goodbye volcano high yeah goodbye, you're, volcano i'm gonna high. buy it listen i i'm gonna buy it for you for your birthday next year <laughs> so you know. jim jim i can promise you that in return you will receive back in a box the charred <laughs> remnants of whatever it was because I will light it on fire. I don't think you can mail stuff. Well, I guess you can. You know what? I think you have to declare that. Like, is there anything hazardous in here? It's like, there was. <laughs> Probably about 14 pounds of lighter fluid, but I think it's safe now. <laughs> <laughs> it stopped smoldering a couple days ago. Um. So, okay. You know, I, I, I guess, you know, with... Well, I'm really curious on older games like Ghost and I know God of War, they said, is going to offer a 60 frame a second mode. Um, PlayStation's still been very, very quiet on exactly what we can expect from the new hardware uh, in terms of performance. So next week, I think we I think we all agree. We saw it. We saw the debut of what the thing looked like. We're all blown away. So to me, this is a throwaway week showing it in detail. Look, here's the headphones. Here's I don't care. We know it's sexy. We want it. That's why we bought the damn thing. Next week, I think, is going to be a much bigger news day in terms of, like, what does this thing actually do? Like, how good does this thing actually look now? Yeah. So, um, one other piece of news that I added before we get into some other stuff that you had um, was FanFest. <laughs> mm. Only to be fair to Xbox. We, talk, we talked a little bit about them earlier. Talk about PlayStation. We'll go back to Xbox now. Um, Fan Fest was so bad. <laughs> did you ever get a response back? You did, right? They said they were sorry. They said they were sorry and that I was going to get a code for some free Microsoft points or something, but that didn't happen. Still haven't got, I have not yet. Uh, same as me. I have yet to receive anything. Um, I know we talked earlier and I, I, I intentionally put up that photo of Chris Lee and talked a little bit about my experience at Fan Fest because 
I do believe in FanFest. I really do. The more you are willing to cut the media out and talk directly to the folks, I like that. I like the fact that you're going to get one-on-one time with Phil Spencer and you're going to get to talk to famous, not even famous, I'll just say important key people in Xbox and really tell them what you think. And typically people are gushing. Uh, Like, oh my God, Phil. Oh my God, Phil. And he's got like nine body. So you meet Phil Spencer. When you meet Phil Spencer, he's in a separate area from everyone else. And he's got like five people around him. That guy probably, I don't know what his salary is, but like, it's like Secret Service. They got the little thing in there. Like, oh, good. All right, next. And just some like little fat kid trots up. He's like, Phil, will you throw my poster? They're like, ah, oh, he's no threat. Next, you know. <laughs> they look around and they're like, we don't need all these security. Like, <laughs> like we just walk no. five flights of stairs. <laughs> Until you and I walk in and they're like, holy shit, these guys are big. These guys are macho, man. Look at these studs. All Phil has to do is walk up like three three flights of stairs and everyone's going to be like, oh, he's getting away. <laughs> <laughs> Goom. <laughs> listen, listen, I'm a fair stereotypical fat gamer, so I can make fun of myself. But the point is, Fan Fest was a bust. I'll be curious to see what they do in the future. Um... The other piece of news that I found interesting that isn't getting as much attention, honestly, as some of the other stuff is um, Capcom released a statement the other day for Devil May Cry, the new Devil May Cry 4 Remastered or 5 Remastered Ultimate Edition, whatever they're calling it. Um, And they said that um, ray tracing will not be supported on the Series S, but it will be on the Series X. And this is just another small, people are like, who cares, ray tracing, I get it. This is a small, I think, chink in the armor of me, once again, just want to point this out for posterity. I think the Series S is holding back the Series X development. And this is yet another example of the X can do this, but the S can't do this. I think we're going to see a lot more of this news story coming up in the year. And I'll be really curious if in a year from now people are as hyped up on the S as they are today. So Jim knows what he's talking about, but for those who don't know what he's talking about or exactly what the inference here is here, Jim means that because the Xbox Series S exists and games have to be developed to work on both, Mm -hmm. the capabilities of the X are being held back by what its little brother can't do. That's what Jim means by that, because he doesn't explain or give context to things. Thank you. Thank you for speaking. Yes, I am up here. Thank you, Phil, for translating my message to the masses. <laughs> You've done your part, sir. Um, yeah. No, and I, I, the truth is, you know, when you're developing, you always have to develop to the lowest common denominator. That's just the reality. Uh, it's just that way. It's always been that way. Um, it has to be able to run on both because no developer is going to develop a game twice. They're going to say, oh, here's Assassin's Creed Valhalla for PlayStation five or for xbox series x and then oh well it's not as good okay here's another copy of a a valhalla which is radically reduced in quality for the s so don't worry about you know they're not going to spend that kind of money they're not going to they're going to pick one and they're going to say this is what you're getting you might get a little bit of upgrades here and there from the hardware this one was a little better than that but the reality is this is a small thing i think The, the ray tracing right now is a small thing but i I suspect as time goes on and as developers really understand how to make these consoles work and make really powerful games, I think the S is going to fall off very quickly. I really do. Yeah, I don't think the S is going to... I don't think the development cycle for for holding the X in a, in a place of importance is going to last very long. I think that the S is largely a gimmick to help boost Xbox's sales and like give them bragging rights. Yeah. And I think that within a year, you see games starting to be... you know made for the xbox series x and its predecessors later along in the generation true um other exciting news that happened this week assassin's creed speaking of assassin's creed that's why i chose that example see what i did there assassin's creed is getting a live action series coming to netflix do we care do you care nope nope did you see the assassin's creed movie no it wasn't bad. <laughs> now, the problem with video game movies, and I listed a few of them here, Mortal Kombat, Max Payne, Ratchet and Clank. I'll say Sonic and Pikachu were okay. Most of the time, video game movies, Street Fighter, are garbage. 
they it's made by people who do not understand the concept of what the game is the feeling of the game the emotion of the game and instead they just take one or two small gimmicks and they make a movie around something that doesn't really matter to like the game at all and all i can think of an assassin's creed live action series are we going to have a person like doing the animus thing is that what it's going to be like we're going to have a guy laying in bed who's going to like plug <clears throat> into the matrix and then he's going to be somebody else to solve a present day mystery because if that is what they're doing i guess it would work but let's be honest some of the assassin's creed plots are kind of hokey you play the game because it's fun you're not going to watch the show because you're not going to get that interaction of climbing and running and jumping and you know what i mean like you take right. that element away and at its core basis of what Assassin's Creed is, it's not that great. <laughs> it really is. No, so the concept of this fraternal brotherhood of of assassins fighting with the, you know, shadow government that is the Templars, that in and of itself is a very interesting and compelling storyline and they could do a lot with it. But Absolutely. I feel like video game movies get caught in the uncanny valley where it's it it's an immensely popular video game series and it has a great story, but it's only an immensely popular video game series because you're living the stories with a certain level of intimacy and right. control over the character. Right. Like I am directly involved in the success or the failure of this overall mission. And the story is being told as my successes or failures progress. And I mean, like you said it perfectly, I'm in controlling of the running, jumping, shooting, stabbing, whatever it may be. Right. So I have a direct connection to this and I have a reason to want to see it through whoever they pick. You know, if this series ends up being in the Ezio like line of things, I'll oh, yeah. give it two episodes. Right. I will watch it if it's about Ezio, if it's about literally anyone else except maybe Edward Kenway, I don't give a fuck. If they like make a whole new assassin that I'm supposed to care about, like, and try to tie him into this, I'm not even. I won't even read the description. I'll I'll have a chip on my shoulder as I scroll over it angrily to get to something else to watch on Netflix. So here's what I'm gonna tell you. Here's the here's my joke. <laughs> I had to Google the name to make sure I was right. The joke is this game is going to the move the show is going to be about Duncan Walpole and he was the loser assassin that Edward Kenway killed thirty He's seconds in the black flag. <laughs> He's in a bush. So, <laughs> so it's going to be him like, hello, I'm Duncan Walpole, master assassin. Yeah. And then that's it. Thank you for watching. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hope, I mean, the gimmick of the Animus when it first came out was really interesting. And I have to admit that when the game was first coming out, it was Kristen Bell. I remember this very distinctly because my wife is a big fan of Kristen Bell, the actress. She used to watch Veronica Mars, and I don't know what other show she was in. So when my wife found out that Kristen Bell was going to be a voice actor and have a prominent role in Assassin's Creed, she started reading a lot about it. And in an interview, this was before Assassin's Creed 1 came out, Kristen Bell announced that the game actually was this animus. And she mentioned the animus. Up until then, Ubisoft had never mentioned it. Everybody thought the game was you were uh, Altair the entire time. We didn't find out about it till Desmond until really at launch. But Kristen Bell kind of like leaked it accidentally. She slipped up during an interview. And Ubisoft, they didn't get mad at her. They're like, well, you weren't supposed to say anything. But people are going to find out pretty well. That whole dunk, that whole thing of Desmond and Subject 13 and being locked inside of there had some intrigue to it, but it ultimately fell flat. Then they had these weird aliens, these people. The before it, it, it dissolved, and it was very clear to me that at that point Ubisoft had no idea what this Animus idea was. It was a horrible idea, and yet they continue to have every game have a character who learns about their past for some stupid reason, um, and. I seeing all these games now progress in animus and animus and animus, they would do well in this show to dump the animus idea. Just exactly like you said, it's a pick, pick any of the assassins we've had that were interesting, make a show about them. Just exactly like you said, that's it. That's all you have to do. Forget the animus, nope. forget the present. For, that doesn't matter. Just make it a feature piece in the past Anime, uh, Templars fighting assassins. I think that would work. 
Yeah, I agree with everything you said, except for the pick any assassin that you think is interesting, because obviously they thought all of them were interesting, but only fucking two of them were interesting. Ezio Auditore di Firenze and uh, Edward Kenway. Like, Altair, great guy, not compelling enough of a story to make a, a series around. Uh, <laughs> That's Altair flicking you off. Altair is my guy, but I understand what you're saying. I think Enzo definitely, or um, uh, Ezio, definitely the the main guy for sure, right? I mean, he's... His whole trilogy, he had like three or four games. Like everybody loves him the most by far. I think Black Flags had the best, Black Flag had the best mechanics, but I think definitely by far people would relate, you know, because that would, I mean, Assassin's Creed 2 is just so mind blowing. It really, it was really a good game. It really was a good game. Yeah. I kind of want to go back and play it now. <laughs> well, you're still, uh, when you get done playing Farming Sim 17, you know, I know. I, you, I haven't played it in weeks. I know you got to play it. <laughs> Um, <laughs> last, uh, last piece of news or discussion point for this week is, and this was a good question you asked, um, in the, what game that we currently know that is currently in production will define this console generation. And mm-hmm. prior to even knowing <laughs> all this crap with Chris Lee, I said, Halo Infinite. And I'm doubling down on my answer of Halo Infinite. I'm going to tell you both reasons why. The first reason was, before I knew about Chris Lee, Halo Infinite has promised to be a generation game. They have said numerous times, we will make a 10-year experience. We are going to add in new content regularly. You are going to be playing this game 10 years from now. They have said that numerous times. Mm. So to me... If that is true, the vision of Microsoft's one gaming accessible to everyone absolutely falls in line with this in every way. The way you play it, how you play it, how long you play it, the longevity of it, the this is just like something you do. You wake up, you log in and do your Halo daily, and you brush your teeth. Like it's gonna be part of your life. However, post Chris Lee. <laughs> I also think this game will define the console generation because if this game fails, I suspect Microsoft will never make hardware again. And I think they will go as a purely software company because the sales of this console will rapidly diminish when people realize how powerful the service game pass is. And I think they will realize they have no reason to make hardware anymore. So I think mm. everything Microsoft rides on this game more than any other game, more than Forza coming out, more than whatever Gears of War and the Coalition is working on. This to me, even over the Bethesda acquisition, to me, this is Microsoft's ride or die game and it matters a whole hell of a lot. That's one of the other reasons why I'm so blown away by the news. How, how will they keep Game Pass going without consoles? You're going to have to open it up to PlayStation and you're going to have to open up to Nintendo. You're going to double down on your cloud streaming service and you're going to basically be like a Stadia. You're going to say, if you want to play our games and you have an old Xbox laying around, great. If not, pick up your phone and that's how you're going to play. Hmm. We're just that gonna, is an interesting theory. And we're going to just get rid of, we're not going to do hardware anymore. We clearly have thrown the the biggest monstrous piece of hardware ever. They announced the other day. I don't know if you got to watch it. I think I might have sent it to you. Um, they recently announced the other day that uh, Gears of War 5. Well, I think Gears 5. It's not of war anymore, but it'll always be Gears of War to me. Gears 5 announced that um, the Xbox Series X will be able to run the game in multiplayer at 120 frames a second with the ultra high settings that are currently available on pc in other words it will run it as fast now as my gaming computer my five thousand dollar gaming computer has now met its match with gears of war 5 running on xbox series x so that um that really blew me away so they are throwing the biggest amount of hardware possible at this thing if halo cannot run this run well on this hardware they don't know how to make games or they don't know how to make hardware. One of the two. And hardware is always going to lose because it's a, it's the one that's going to lose them the most money. Yeah, I gotcha. Yeah, I definitely appreciate your feedback. Um, 
I think that you hit it right on the nose with Halo. Um, you definitely, you definitely took, and this is not a criticism of you. You obviously are smart, and you took the obvious answer. Um, so obviously, I can't, you know. And I went first. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't piggyback you off you and say that, but I wasn't going to say Halo anyway. Oh, good. Truthfully, I was, I'm glad. I was going to say the Elder Scrolls Six. I think that Starfield is kind of kind of be like a whatever yes. midway th- midway through this generation, the Xbox Series X two or XL or whatever the fucking upgraded version of that is going to be is going to come out, and we're going to see yeah. Elder Scrolls Six launch with it, and it's just going to blow everyone away. I mean, ten year experience, you know, whatever. You become, you know, a game as a service instead of a game as a story. That's fine. But I feel like as far as a game is concerned, that's going to be a standalone. I think Elder Scrolls 6 is going to define the generation. I think it's going to be a masterpiece. Man, I hope so. You know, you were an early, I assume you're like me and you bought Elder Scrolls pretty much day one. You bought Skyrim day day one. The day it came out, yeah. You bought it on Xbox, though, correct? 360? 360. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I bought it on PlayStation 3, which was a horrible mistake. <laughs> you may or may not recall, PlayStation 3 was radically broken, um, the, the game release, so much so that the save file, after a while, ballooned so big, it created a memory leak in the game. And when you would fast travel, it would bring every living asset with you to your fast travel point. So you would fast travel, it doesn't matter where. You fast travel in, it was entirely full of every dragon, every NPC, every goblin, every everything. The game would either crash or run at such a low frame rate until you could turn away from the action and look down and wait for about 10 minutes until everybody killed everybody. And usually it was like one or two dragons left and then you would kill them and you would be looting a pile of dead bodies for seven or eight hours. And by that point, everything had been killed. You unlocked every dragon soul, whatever. You might say, oh, that's fun. It's not fun. It's game breaking. (laughs) So they had to patch the game and re-release it. And everybody, myself included, lost our original save file. And that was really where Bethesda got, was known for releasing crappy games and these very buggy experiences. So... I'm with you, dude. I want Elder Scrolls to be perfect. But Bethesda has a bad history of releasing very broken games. Oh, yeah. It'll be broken. It'll be partially broken, but that's part of the fun. It's part of the fun for me. Like, listen, I know something that's that broken would be super fucking frustrating. I never experienced that. My PS3 games are put away, uh, so I can't see. I have my PS4 games out. I have my 360 and my Xbox One game. So right. my PS3 games are put away in a box somewhere, so I can't see if I have it for PS3. But if I do, I bought it because I thought I was going to play it and never did. So I don't have that experience. Skyrim's got that. But you know what? It's got its hooks in me because I bought it for PlayStation 3. I bought it for PlayStation 4. I bought the remastered for PlayStation 4 slash PlayStation 4 Pro. I bought the basic version for PC. I bought the legendary version for PC, and I bought it for virtual reality. Nice. <laughs> and I and honestly, I have regretted zero. Of, and maybe the original PlayStation Three one is the most frustrating one, but I regret none of the purchases. And I have logged. I still think I've played more Halo Five in my life with the three thousand hours of Halo Five, but definitely. I've played a shit ton of Skyrim. That's definitely, no doubt about it, that's my number two. Combined on all the platforms, that's definitely my number two game. So Jim bought a $60 game six times. Um, Jim has spent $360 on a game. Alone, yes. Alone, Jim, one game. Jim has, Jim has bought a console. <laughs> Let me ask you this. Skyrim, let's say, we know that PlayStation, PlayStation, we know that Halo Infinite will launch prior to um elder scrolls right i mean that's a pretty safe bet at this point we hope we don't even know anything about starfield yet so let's say that play let's say that the xbox series x launches a collector edition halo infinite console despite Mm -hmm. everything i've told you about the game might not be what we think it is are you still going to buy it 
I'll buy them both. I know I know that what you're going to ask me. You, I know okay, so when the so when the Elder Scrolls comes out, let's say they come out with a collector edition console in 2023, you're telling me you'd buy another Xbox just for that console? In a fucking heartbeat. Wow. I, I wouldn't be able to give them my money fast enough. I'm not picking on you because I own four PlayStation 4s. <laughs> I'm not picking on you. I don't know... If they both came out at the same time and you can only pick one, I assume you're picking Elder Scrolls. Let's say they both released the limited console at the same time. Games, not the game. Just here's a Halo console. Here's the Elder Scrolls console. They're both Series X's. Which one do you want? You can only have one, though. I would assume Elder Scrolls for you. I'm instantly Halo, no doubt about it. Unless it, well, I don't know. I guess it depends on what it looks like. Jim, I, I think you underestimate just how much I fell back in love with Halo playing it with you Ooh. again. I really, really love Halo. So that, I... Good question, I then. Answer. I refuse to answer. I, I'll never be forced into that situation, so I don't have to answer, so I'm not going to. Well, I will say that the Halo 5 Guardians Xbox One console look like total ass. So much so that I did not buy the Halo console. I actually held off on buying an Xbox because I knew Halo was coming out the next year and I waited until they released the console. And I remember sitting at home because Xbox came out. I didn't get it. A lot of my friends got it. They were playing Titanfall. I wanted to play it. I didn't get to play Titanfall. I said, I am waiting for this Halo console. I, am, I know they're going to come out with one. And I will remember it like it was yesterday, sitting on the couch. Rachel and I are hanging out. She gets a tweet. She goes, Jim, the console is here. I could not jump out of the couch fast enough to run over to look at her phone. And as she's holding up her phone, she's making this face like... <laughs> I swear it was slow motion, Phil. I will never forget to stay as long as I live. It was like... <laughs> and, she, and I see her face and I'm like... And I'm looking and I'm like, why is she making a face? And then I look at the phone and I just said, no. That's all I said, no. <laughs> and I just, and I, <laughs> it's like my world just collapsed. I ended up sticking with the Forza console, which is a nice one. I still have it, but that was my holdout. So I guess what I'll say in closing on the console discussion, just because they're coming out with one doesn't mean it's going to look the way it should. And doesn't yeah. it, they, they, the developers of these things clearly don't understand what people like because that console was ugly. <laughs> it's an ugly. I'll say this. Ugly. I wouldn't, I'll say this. I wouldn't buy the X, if they were both out at the same time, yeah. I wouldn't buy the Xbox one if I didn't look, if I didn't like the way it looked. Okay. I would buy the Elder Scrolls no matter what. I would buy the Elder Scrolls one no matter what because I just love the Elder Scrolls that much. Mm. Okay. What would be last question, and then we'll wrap up because we're 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 at the hour mark. Let me ask you this: What is your dream Elder Scrolls console look like? Could you answer? Or do you need to think about it? Does it look like a castle? Is it like a dragon head? Is it a sword? Like, is it a guy? No, a dragon head would be Skyrim. We don't know what the conflict is or who the main antagonist and protagonist are for Elder Scrolls Six. So I would say, what if it's an actual scroll? <laughs> you lay it sideways, and <laughs> the console's embedded in this like shitty-looking toilet paper tube thing. <laughs> oh, I thought you meant the graphic across the case was an Elder Scroll. No, I meant like That's... it's turned sideways and like rolled up hastily in like a tube of something. <laughs> okay. So everyone, much like Jim can never come up with a good idea or take anything seriously, <laughs> war also never changes. No, See you, you can't. No, we're not the... <laughs> You can't end that way. Do whatever I want, bitch. I demand an answer on the console. Yeah, that's your homework for next week, okay? Okay. All right. Well, you already gave your farewell, so I guess we don't have to do our my my pretty graphic. I'm just gonna flash it because I worked so hard on it. There we go. All right. Well, listen, sir, it's been a blast recording with you. It's been episode 27 of War Never Changes, your weekly video game podcast. If you like it and you made it to the end. Do us a favor, comment, rate, subscribe. We appreciate all your comments. 
that we see and I see him more than Phil and we do have some. So maybe next week we'll go back and read some of the comments and, and we can laugh at some of the earlier stuff that people have said about us because I do have a few that I didn't bring up today, but I, I will bring up later. I would love that. And they're, uh, they're about how stupid and wrong we are. So you got to put on your big boy pants. <laughs> YouTube does a great job of filtering these things out, but I always approve them. You could say whatever you want and I will always approve it. As long as it's nothing like hate, hurt, hurtful or like racist or anything, but like you're an idiot because bring it on. I will, I will pin that shit. I will put it to the top of the list. I want the world to see. That's right. And I will come and just tear you apart in the comments because I'm a six-year-old. As we saw with your Twitter feed to poor Alana. Fuck that bitch. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys.